The place where life and death hang in the balance, ICU wards in Manitoba. Dr. Kenneth Olofsson takes a break from her shift in ICU at St. Boniface Hospital. She has worked at the bedside through all three waves of the pandemic. I am exhausted. I'm sad. It's like watching a train crash occur in slow motion as we see um, the pandemic continuing to explode and our numbers increasing and our ability to care for increased numbers um, becoming um, diminished. Olofsson has almost 20 years experience in ICU. Never has she seen so many patients and so much death in such a short period of time. Multiple situations where members of the same family have been admitted to ICU and are dying in rooms next to each other or in different ICUs across the city. We um, bear witness to the suffering of others. We walk with the patients and families. But in many cases, we feel that that grief is not ours to own. And so we write ourselves off into the margin and at risk of unprocessed, disenfranchised grief. Olofsson says there are still patients recovering from the second wave in ICU, with units now bigger and busier with a new influx of patients. Staff are working longer shifts, extra shifts going into the third wave with limited time to recover in between. She's worried about significant burnout among those on the front line. It's been very tiring, exhausting, sad, very depressing, very hard um, to cope. I have sought out um, counseling. Jane, an ICU nurse, has also been at the bedside through all three waves. CBC is not naming her to protect her identity. Jane says while death has always been part of working in ICU, it's different now with COVID. She calls it grief intensified. I have been present in so many of those deaths. Um, yeah, it, it really weighs on you that we haven't had enough time to process their death. For Jane, working in ICU during a pandemic has been an awakening, knowing she has to look after herself and find a balance. She's transitioning out of ICU into a new job in the community. Olofsson is worried about the level of fatigue and burnout she's seeing. She's also involved in a research project at the University of Manitoba that's looking at how the pandemic has changed grief for patients, families and frontline workers. Now in the heat of a third wave, Olofsson is holding on to hope that there will be an end to this pandemic as more people get vaccinated and there will be some much needed relief for those on the front line. I find hope in that the, you know, we are, we are close to the finish line. We're close to the finish line, but we're not there yet. Marianne Kloak, CBC News, Winnipeg.